Hi, today we're going to be learning how to use the Pythagorean theorem to help us to calculate the missing lengths of sides in right angle triangles. We're going to start off by just reminding you about the Pythagorean theorem and what it actually is and, and how it works. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem is a theorem that works with right angle triangles and it says that in a right angle triangle the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Okay, so if you look at it like this, if you've got your triangle ABC, then the side opposite the right angle is our hypotenuse. So that's the side of here, BC or A. And if we square that, it will give us the same result as squaring the other two sides and adding them together. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. And the reason I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC, because angle A in that triangle is 90 degrees because the Pythagorean theorem only works for right angle triangles. Okay, so now let's have a look at using this to help us to actually calculate the lengths of uh, sides in right angle triangles. The first example we're going to look at is this one over here. We've got triangle XYZ. We need to determine the value of X. Where we've been told that XY is 15 centimeters xz is 9 centimeters and angle z is 90 degrees. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would actually do this. So first of all, in this triangle, I need to know which side is the hypotenuse. It is a right angle triangle, so that means we can use Pythagoras' theorem, but I need to know which side is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side of the triangle, the one that is opposite the right angle. Okay, so that's going to be xy. So it's going to be 15 squared, equals yz squared, which is x, plus xz squared, which is 9. Okay, now this over here, I could have written differently, but first let me just put my reason, so this Pythagoras' theorem, theorem in triangle xyz, with angle z equal to 90 degrees. Okay, because we always have to give a reason for any statement we make in geometry. Okay, but now this over here, I've written it in the same way that we had for our theorem over there, that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the other two sides squared and added together. But I don't have to write it in that order. What I can do is because I'm working out x, which is one of the other two sides, I can write it so that the x is on the left-hand side of the equation. It'll just make it easier. So I'm going to write my whole equation the other way around. So x squared plus 9 squared is equal to 15 squared. Okay, so I could have written it like that right from the start so that I don't have to then go and move things around, okay, as much. So I've got over here, x squared is equal to, now I'm going to simplify these, 9 squared, or x squared plus, sorry, 9 squared is 81 equals 15 squared is 225. Now once I've done that, I'm going to then go and solve for x, but first I need to take my 81 across, so that's, or I'm going to subtract the 81 on both sides to get rid of it. So that gives me x squared equals 225 minus 81. Okay, 225 minus 81 is 144. Okay, so x squared is equal to 144. Now, I don't want to know what x squared is. I want to know what just x is. So to get rid of that square, I need to do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. I need to find out what x is by square rooting both sides. So x is equal to the square root of 144, which means that x is equal to 12. So now I know that x is 12, but it's 12 what? So in our diagram, x y was 15 centimeters, y, uh, xz was 9 centimeters, which means that x is going to be 12 centimeters. So that's what we should get for that example. So we use Pythagoras' theorem to get our initial statement, which we then are going to solve. We have to give a reason saying which triangle we're working with and how we know that it's a right angle triangle, which means that Pythagoras' theorem will work. Okay, and then once we've done that, we then solve, make sure we square root properly and give our unit of measurement as well. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to do for yourself. In this example over here, you need to work out the value of B. Okay, and I'm going to give you one minute for this question.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, in this example, we are working with triangle ABC. We need to work out B, which is on the hypotenuse. So it's going to be B squared equals the other two sides squared and added together. So it's going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared. And the reason I can say that is because of Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC. And the reason I can use the Pythagorean theorem is because angle B in that triangle is 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's go and work out what B is. So B squared is equal to 25 plus 144, and that is equal to 169. Okay, so now if B squared is 169, that means that B must be equal to the square root of 169. Now, you don't have to write square root of 169 like I did in this example. We can work it out straight away. The square root of 169 is 13, and that is 13 meters because in this question, the length of the sides have been given to us in meters. So for question A, you should have got that B is 13 meters. Okay, so let's go on to the next question. Question B. Here you've got triangle DEF, and you need to work out the length of, or the value of F, which is the length of DE. Okay, and I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question as well. Okay, so let's see how that question went. So first of all, in this question, DE, or in the triangle DEF, you have been given DE is F, that's what we need to work out. EF is 29 centimeters, that is the one that's opposite the right angle, which means it's the hypotenuse. And DF is 21 centimeters. So we need to work out what the value of F is. Now, because I want to work out F, I want F to be on the left-hand side of my equation. It's just going to make my life easier. So I'm going to have the sum of the other two sides on the left and the hypotenuse squared on the other, on the other side on the right. Okay, so I'm going to have F squared plus 21 squared equal to 29 squared. And the reason I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle T D E F. And the reason I can use the Pythagorean theorem is because in that triangle, angle D is 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's go and solve this. So first, I need to simplify the 21 squared and the 29 squared. So I've got F squared plus 21 squared is 441 and 29 squared is 841. So that gives me F squared equal to 441 or plus 441 equal to 841. Now I'm going to go and get rid of the 441 on the side. So I've got F squared equals 841 minus the 441 which means that f squared is equal to 400. So now if f squared is 400, that means that f must be the square root of 400, which is 20. So f is 20. Now in our question, the length of the sides were given to us in centimeters, so that means that f is 20 centimeters. So that's what we should have got for question B. Okay, so now the ones we've done so far it's all worked out to nice numbers. But the reality is when we're working with Pythagoras, because we're working with squaring and square rooting, a lot of the time we're not going to have nice numbers to work with. So 
what we're going to do is you need to know how to give answers in third form, which means leaving them in their simplest form with the square root still there. And we're also going to do examples where you're going to be leaving them um, rounded off to two decimal places as well. Okay, but first I want to show you how to give your answers in simplest third form. So in this example that we've got over here, we have got the triangle MNO. We need to work out the value of N, which is the length of MO, which is opposite angle N. Okay, and we've been told that MN is 2 meters and NO is 4 meters. So it's going to start off exactly the same as the ones we've been doing up until now. So we have in triangle MNO, N is on the hypotenuse, so it's going to be N squared equals the other two sides squared and added together. So it's going to be 2 squared plus 4 squared. And the reason I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle MNO with N equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so now I've got my opening statement with my reason. Now we're going to go and we're going to solve for N. So I've got N squared equals 2 squared plus 4 squared, that is 4 plus 16, n squared equals 20. Okay, so now my problem is 20 is not a perfect square. If I take my calculator and I type in the square root of 20, I'm going to get an irrational number, a number that is not a nice number to work with. Okay, so I could write that rounded off to two decimal places if that was the instruction I was given, but it's not. In this particular question, the instruction I've been given is to write it in simplest third form. So what that means is I mustn't work out the decimal answer and round it off. What I need to do is I need to keep it as a square root. So first of all, I need to write it as a square root. So n is equal to the square root of 20. Okay, but now I need to write it in the simplest way that it can be. It's kind of like simplifying fractions, that there's more than one way of writing it. Okay, so the square root of 20 can also be written like this. So n is equal to, now 20 can be split up into different factors. And I want to try and find if there are any factors of 20 that are perfect squares, and then I can square root those. So 20 is the same as 2 times 10. That's not really going to help me because 2 and 10 both aren't perfect squares. But 20 is also the same as 4 times 5. Now 4 is a perfect square. So this I can say is 4 times 5. Okay. Now the square root of 4 times 5 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. I can square root those two factors separately, which means I can work out the square root of 4, which is 2, and then it's multiplied by the square root of 5. This is the simplest third form of the square root of 20. Okay, so that is what we would need to do for this question. So I can say, therefore, n is 2 times the square root of 5. And that I still need to give in my unit of measurement, which in this case was meters. So my answer for this one, n is 2 times the square root of 5. So when you have to give your answer in simplest third form, you first write it as a third, which is writing it with a square root, okay? So we write it as, in this case, it was the square root of 20. Then you take that number and you see if you can break it up into factors that allow it, that allow you to square root anything, because we need to try and square root anything that can be square rooted. So I can square root 4, which means I need to square root 4, okay? And that gives me 2, and then I can't square root the 5, so it stays as the square root of 5. So the square root of 20 is the same as 2 root 5. Okay, so that's how we do that example. So now you're going to have a couple for yourself that you're going to do the same thing. Also, writing your answers in simplest third form. Okay, so the first one you're going to do is this one over here. You've got triangle JKL. You need to work out the value of J, where you've been told that JK is 6 centimeters and JL is 3 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, you have to recognize that the side you're trying to find is the hypotenuse. Okay, so j squared will be equal to the other two sides squared and added together. So that's equal to 6 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, the reason I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle JKL. Because J is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that is my, the start of my question. What I need to do now is need to go and work this out. So 6 squared is 36, 3 squared is 9, that gives me 45. Now 45 is not a perfect square. So now I'm going to say therefore j, so j squared was equal to that, j is equal to the square root of that. Okay, but now this is not the simplest way of writing this. 45 can be written in a few different ways. I can break it up into factors. I can say 45 is 3 times 15, but that's not going to help me because 3 and 15 both aren't perfect squares. 45 is also 9 times 5. Now, 9 is a perfect square, so that'll help me. So this, I can say, is the square root of 9 times 5, okay? Now, I can square root those separately. The square root of 9 is 3 and I can't square root 5, so that's going to be just the square root of 5. So it's 3 times the square root of 5, or 3 root 5. So that's what we should have got for, for j in question A. And that is centimeters. So therefore j is 3 root 5 centimeters. Okay, so that's what we should have got for question A. Question B, you're going to do the same process. Here you have got triangle PQR. You need to work out the value of R, which is on PQ, and you have been told that, P, that PR is 12 meters and QR is 21 meters. And I'm going to give you two minutes for this question as well. Okay, so let's see how that question went. So in question B, first of all, you had to recognize that R is not the hypotenuse. It is, what is, it is one of the right angle sides. So when I have R squared, I need to add it to the other right angle side. That is 12 squared. And that is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. So that's equal to 21 squared. Okay, so the reason I can say all of that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle PQR because angle P is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the start of the question. Now what we need to do is we need to go and work out what each of these are. So that's R squared plus 144 
is equal to 21 squared, which is 441. Right, so now r squared is equal to 441 minus 144. That gives us 297. Now again, if you take 297 and you square root it, that is going to give you an irrational number, not a very nice number. So we can't keep it like that. We have to write it in simplest cert form because that's the instruction that you were given for this question. Okay, so now 297, first of all, we have to square root it. But now 297 isn't such an easy number to work with like 45 was or like 20 was. So let's just go through our perfect squares from the beginning and see if any of them are divisible or can divide into 297. So first of all, 297 is not an even number, which means that 4 will not go into it because 4 is an even number. Let's try 3 squared, which is 9. So 297 divided by 9, let's see. Yes, 9 does go, sorry, you can't see that. 9 does go into 297. It goes into 297 33 times. So that means that 297, I can write as 9 times 33. Now, 33 itself is not divisible by any other perfect square either. So I'm just going to use 9 times 33. So this is going to be the square root of 9 times 33, which means I can then simplify this and say the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 33. And that's what you should have got for r in that question. Now, it was in meters, so it's going to be 3 times the square root of 33 meters for, for the length of r. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that question. Right, now all the questions we've done up until this point, we've had single right angle triangles that we're working with. But the reality is you're not only going to have single right angle triangles, you'll also need to know how to do questions that involve more than one triangle. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next few examples. So this one over here, you have to work out the value of x, and you've been given two triangles here that are joined by db. They share that side db. Now your instruction is to round off to two decimal places if necessary. Okay, so obviously it says if necessary because you might not need to round off. Sometimes it'll work out to a nice answer, but if you do need to round off, then it must be to two decimal places. So now we're not going to be writing in a simplest third form. So we're going to use our calculator to work out the answer and round it off. I need to work out the length of x. Now, x is part of triangle BDC. Now, in triangle BDC, I only know one side. I only know the length of CD. I do not know the length of BD. The problem with that is that it means that I can't work out x using Pythagoras yet for that triangle. What I can do though is I can work out the length of BD using Pythagoras in ABD, in this triangle. Okay, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to work out the length of BD in triangle ABD, then I can use that to help me to work out the length of x. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do two parts to our calculation. First, we're going to work out the length of BD, okay? using triangle ABD. So over here, BD squared is what I want to work out first. I want to work out BD. Okay, it is one of the right angle sides in that triangle, so I'm going to add it to the other right angle side, which is AB, which is 4. So it's BD squared plus 4 squared. And that is equal to the hypotenuse squared, so that's going to be 7 squared. And for this over here, I'm working with Pythagoras, the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABD. And the reason I can do it is because of that angle which is 90 degrees. Now, I can't just say angle B because there are two angles at B, so I need to actually specify which angle it is. So it's angle ABD, which is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what I start off with. Now let's go and work that out. So that's going to be BD squared plus 16 equals 49, so BD squared is equal to 49 minus 16, which is 33. Okay, so once we've got that, we can now go and work out the square root of 33. But if I try and work out the square root of 33, 
you'll see that that is not a nice answer. That already is something that we would round off, but I'm not going to round it off yet because I'm not at the end of my question. If I round off now and I use a round off, rounded off answer halfway through my calculation to carry on with my calculation, I'm going to end up with the wrong answer at the end because I'm using a rounded off value. I'm not using the true value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is instead of rounding this off, I'm going to keep this as the square root of 33. Okay, if it did work out nicely, I could just write down the proper value, but it doesn't work out nicely. So I'm going to use it and keep it as the square root of 33. I'm not going to round that off. This, now in this case, they didn't tell me centimeters or meters or anything. Because they didn't give a unit of measurement, I'm just going to say units. Whatever the unit of measurement is, that works, okay? So if they tell you an actual unit of measurement, you use the unit of measurement they give you. But if they don't, you can just say units for the unit of measurement, okay? So BD is the square root of 33 units. Now I'm going to use that to help me to work out the value of x. So now I'm looking at the other triangle, triangle B, C, D. So let's have a look at that quickly. So now I know that this over here is the square root of 33. I know that C, D is 5, so now I can work out X. X is the hypotenuse in this triangle over here. Okay, so I'm going to have X squared equal to those two sides squared and added together. So over here, I have X squared equals... 5 squared plus the square root of 33 squared. Okay, so what I got over there was the square root of 33. I'm now squaring it again. And the reason I can do that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle BCD with angle BDC equal to 90 degrees. Okay. So now let's go and work this out. So first of all, 5 squared is 25 plus. Now the square root of 33 squared actually is not difficult. When you have a square root and a square, they cancel each other out. So this is just going to be 33. Okay, and that makes sense because if you think over here, BD squared was 33. And here we are actually squaring BD, which means that it should also be 33. Okay, so it's 25 plus 33. And that gives us 58. So x squared is equal to 58. That means that x is the square root of 58. So the square root of 58 equals, and over here you get, let's just put that so you can see it, 7.61577310. Okay, so now that obviously needs to be rounded off. And our instruction was to round off to two decimal places. So I look at the second decimal place, and then I need to see what to do to that by looking at the next digit, which is a 5. It's in the 5 or more bracket. That means I need to round this up. So it's going to be 7.62. So x is 7.62. And again, I don't know the unit of measurement, so I'm just going to say units. So that's what we should get for that question. Okay, so if you're working, just quickly let me show you, if you're working with a Casio calculator or another calculator like a Casio, when you do this, the square root of 58, it will give you the answer as insert form. Okay, so if your calculator does that, look for a button like this one over here, SD, okay, and you press on that and that will give it to you in decimal form. And then you can round it off from there. Also, just quickly on that note, if you are using a calculator like this, it will actually do the simplest third form for you as well. So let me just show you this one over here quickly. So say the square root of 45, like that. It works out the simplest third form for you, but it is important for you to know how to do it as well. So you do need to know how to do that, but you can check yourself by using your calculator if you have a calculator that does it. A sharp calculator doesn't, okay? But if you have a Casio or a calculator like a Casio, that does it, then you can use the calculator to check that you have written it in simplest third form correctly. Okay, right, so for this example, we ended up with x equal to 7.62 units. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next couple of questions. Again, you're also going to be rounding off to two decimal places for these questions. Okay, so in this one over here, you have got to work out the value of x, and you've got a triangle that is split up into two triangles, 
with a line wy which is perpendicular to xz you need to work out the value of x using all the information that you can and bearing in mind that you can only use Pythagoras in a triangle that is a right angled triangle so you cannot use straight away the wx and the xz to work out x because it's not a right angle triangle that whole triangle over there you have to use a right angle triangle to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem which means that you need to know what the length of this side is over here so you're going to have to work that out first okay so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question Okay, so let's go through that question. So first of all, you had to work out the length of WY using uh, 13 meters from WX and 6 meters from XY in triangle WXY. So WY squared plus 6 squared, because WY squared is a right-angled side, so we have to add it to the other side squared equals the hypotenuse squared which is 13 squared okay so that's going to be because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle WXY with angle WY's WYX equal to 90 degrees okay so that's how you needed to start now we're going to go and solve this we're going to have WY squared equals or plus sorry plus 36 equals 169 okay so first 169 minus 36 is 133 so when I take this across and subtract it I end up with 133 okay now I need to go and find the square root of that so therefore wy is equal to the square root of 133 which doesn't work out nicely. So I'm going to keep it as the square root of 133. And that is meters. Okay, so remember, if it doesn't work out nicely, just keep it as the square root because you cannot round off until the very end of the question. Next, I'm going to go and work out x. Now, x in triangle WYX or WYZ is a right angle triangle x is the hypotenuse so it's going to be x squared the hypotenuse squared equals wy squared which we worked out over here which is 130 the square root of 133 squared plus 3 squared okay so that's going to be 133 because when we square a square root they cancel so it's 133 plus 9 that gives us 142 so x squared is 142 so now 
x is going to be the square root of 142. And that gives us 11.1 or 11.9163752. Now we're at the end of our question. Now we can round it off. So over here, the second decimal place is a 1. The digit after that is a 6. It means I need to round this up to 2. So it's going to be 11.92. And that is meters. So that's what we should have got for question A. First, you had to work out that wy was the square root of 133. Then you had to work out that x is 11.92. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Now question B, the last one for today. We have got triangle PQS and triangle QRS, which are two triangles making up the big triangle PRS. Okay, and you need to work out the length of x over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that question. But before we actually go through it, I want to just point a few things out to you. So first of all, you had to realize that in order to work out X, you needed to know PQ. You had to use triangle PQS, using the Pythagorean theorem in triangle PQS, to work out X. So you had to know PQ as well as PS. Now we don't know PQ. Now over here, we know that QR is 7, and RS is 13, and PS is 5. Now, I cannot use the 7 and the 13 on their own to work out the PQ over here. It's not even in the same triangle. But what I can do is I can use this whole triangle to work out the length of PR. Because if you look at the whole triangle, PRS, this whole triangle, is a right angle triangle as well. So I know this side is the hypotenuse is 13. I know this side, PS, is 5, so I can use those to work out the length of PR. And if I know the length of PR, I can then work out the length of PQ by subtracting the 7 from the total length to get the PQ over here. So that's what my process is going to be. First, I need to work out the length of PR so that I can work out PQ, and then I can use it to work out X. Okay, so over here, I'm going to start off in this example over here. For question B, working out the length of PR. Now PR is a right angle side in triangle PRS, so I'm going to add it to the other right angle side squared, so this plus 5 squared equals the hypotenuse squared is 13 squared. And my re uh, the reason I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem 
in triangle PRS with angle P equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so now I can go and I can work this out. So first of all, PR squared equals 20 or plus 25 equals 169. So PR squared is equal to 169 minus 25, which is 144. Okay, once I've got that, I can go and square root that. Now this one does actually work out nicely. So that's PR is equal to the square root of 144, which is 12. So that is 12 units because they didn't give us a unit of measurement, it's just units. So now I know the length of PR is 12, but that's not what I really need to know. I don't need to know the length of PR to work out X, I need to know the length of PQ to work out X. But if you look at that diagram again, so if I know that this whole length is 12, and I know this part of it is 7, it means that the other part must be the difference between 12 and 7. So I'm going to say 12 minus 7 to give me the length of PQ. Okay, so over here, PQ is equal to 12 minus 7, which is 5 units. So now I know the length of PQ. Because I know the length of PQ, I can now use it to help me to work out X along with the length of PS, which is also 5. Okay, so now I can say X squared, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle I am now working with, which is triangle PQS, is equal to... 5 squared for the PS squared plus another 5 squared for PQ squared. That's the one I just worked out. And that is also because of the Pythagorean theorem. But this time it is in triangle PQS. With, again, angle P equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's go and work this out. So we've got 25 plus 25 is 50. So x squared is 50. That means that x is the square root of 50. And that gives us 7.071067812. Again, you were told to round this off to two decimal places, which means we're going to look over here at the 7, which is our second decimal place. What must I do, that, do to that? I look at the next digit. It is less than 5, so this is going to stay as it is. So it's 7.07. .07. And that is units. And that's what we should have got for that question. And that is how we use the Pythagorean theorem to help us to work out the missing lengths of sides in right angle triangles. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.